Yep, I can see we're live on YouTube. We are live on YouTube. Well, let me just refresh the screen here. And I'm sure it's going to appear. Well, anyways, those who are just about to join us or those who are watching this video later on, whenever you do it, nighttime or daytime, hello, you beautiful soul, whether you are man or woman, today we'll be talking with amazing and phenomenal professor, 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 <laughs> is it? <laughs> A little bit, a little bit of both, Olga. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Laura Seren, and Laura Seren, she's not only knowledgeable on this topic. I must say, she's the most heartwarming poor person whom I know. She is so wise. She is not only professor in her field; she's also a professional speaker. And she was nominated numerous times for numerous occasions. And I must say that I'm so, so ecstatic and excited to share with you all the knowledge what our Laura is having about men's mental wellness. So, Laura, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the invitation and, uh, and the wonderful introduction, Olga, as always, as always. It's quite interesting that we're here, isn't it? Because we've had a few conversations, but this kind of idea to, to, to share, to discuss the subject together has kind of just, just mushroomed. So very, I'm really pleased to be here. Yeah. The thing is, it's a topic which we discussed a few times. It's something what you know a lot about, obviously, because of who you are, what your field of work is. And it's something what I work on regular basis as well. Oh, I just checked, we are live. Because <laughs> I'm checking on yes. the second machine just to make sure it's happening. And it's, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, double checking. And it's something what I work a lot in my practice, coaching practice as well. And yet, even though you know so much about this, even though I know so much about this, still, you and I, we know people are not aware of that right? And we pay so much attention to, oh, let's support women, let's do events for women support and encouragement and empowerment, and let's organize seminars and everything else. But what about men? Yeah. How are we going to support yeah. men? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Olga, you're right. And, you know, just to say right at the outset, this is not, a, this is not about saying that we should be talking about men instead of women. Yeah. This is actually about something that we share in, in, our, in our kind of professional moral code, if you like, which is about making sure that people have an equal chance. Yes. So it's about saying that we're talking about men's health here um, and men's wellness because of, you know, as 50% of the population, that we need to give equal time equal resources equal thoughts to the health and the wellness of both men and women but what we know is from for our, from our own experience we know from just looking if you were to google gender and health most things come up as women's health yeah. we know from the um the, the health systems that we work in and i know that you know we've got people who link in and, and listen to your 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 podcasts and your um, interviews and your discussions from all over the world but no matter which part of the world we go to it's exactly the same it's not something that just happens in England or just happens in Russia or just happens in the Caribbean that we when we think about health and we think about gender we mainly think about women's health and our systems are set up that way so men's health is not something that gets a lot of um, airtime. So it's really important that we understand that the health of men is important for women as much as the health of women is important for men. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Laura, I love you so much. Here. I love <laughs> you so much here because you said it. You absolutely said it. When yeah. we women don't support our men in terms of mental health, they cannot support us, right? Yes, absolutely. And, 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 it, and it, it's a uh, you know, men and women and men and women coexist within this area of health and wellness and particularly around mental health and wellness. And we know that, you know, um, happily that within our societies in, in the 21st century, we recognize that there are men, there are women, there are people who are in, who are a whole range of spaces in between, transgender, people who re, um, identify as queer, LGBTQ, the whole spectrum. 
but this is so this is not about not recognizing that and i think it's important for us to say that for us we recognize the spectrum it's just that for today we're, we're focusing on men as as an example i suppose of what happens when we don't spend equal emphasis on all our mental health but there are particular things that will impact on us dependent on our gender our sexuality our location and all the things that impact on us so i think um it's important that that we say that because we were talking earlier weren't we about what does it mean health and wellness and that's what people sometimes talk about and and um to, to just say that what we do here is that we take a a world health view of health Towards and that. that means the world health organization identified that health is about physical emotional psychological and social well-being it's not just about illness i.e not having a disease or not having some kind of infirmity so that's what we're talking about health and wellness in this sphere and mental health is often the platform that reflects how well how healthy and how well we are in all those different aspects facets of our bodies our bodies our social life our physical self our emotional self they're played out in our mental health very true very true i love what you said there it's about social it's about physical it's about mental and what else did you say social physical it's mental. About social physical mental emotional as well and Emot- well-being that's because right. if we that's don't have the fit and that's different from mental health is that you know we know for example we know from research we know from our, our own experiences even that sometimes particularly for men it's quite hard for them to express their emotions and have those emotions kind of if you like validated and that there's lots of reasons why that is but if you're not emotionally free to be able to express your emotions it does impact on your mental health there we go exactly and what happens when men are raised since the childhood and they're taught don't cry because you might look like a girl don't express your emotions be a man man up and then they go into relationships and their girlfriends are saying oh you never express your emotions a man get all confused because now they don't know what to do. From one hand, they need to man up and be strong. And from other point of view, they need to show their emotions. So what is right? What is wrong? Like, how can men deal with that? How they can actually find themselves? And also we have now society push from all over the world where they say how you supposed to be. But what about them deep inside? I know I I think it, I think the actual labeling and the social expectations around masculinity what it means to be a man is is one of the things in society that that we have to look to and it is about that that either enables and supports our emotional well-being or not I mean you talk there about examples of the impact um you know on women in partnerships or relationships with men where there is this a lack of you know maybe they've not had the support or being enabled to express their emotions equally think about that as well and and this is something about the idea of masculinity mm-hmm. so if even if we think if we think about men who may be in same sex relationships so gay men for example they many of them will still have had the same messages through your head in terms of what it takes what it what it takes to be male and so you know when we're thinking about relationships you know there are there are specific things about the relationships um whether or not your relationship is a, is a heterosexual relationship men woman or whether it's a it's a relationship of same sex ha, the the messages that we are fed around what it means to be a particular gender mm-hmm. impact on how comfortable we are it impacts on our the how much we accept our own self and sexuality how much we're able to accept other people in a relationship and it impacts on kind of how people in a relationship are able to navigate their way through that because let's face it we all know you know it's never a smooth ride there are ups and downs and sometimes you have to ride the roller coaster and if on top of that you've got challenges around how you can whether you're able to express how you're feeling emotionally you're able to to express what the world expects of you and you're able to talk openly about the things that impact on your health that's yet another thing 
on the top on top of everything else that you would go through as part of normal life very true very true you know what i love what you said there how do we accept how do we accept somebody the way they are and i think i wonder what's your opinion on this but i think this is one of the issues which men are facing in relationships when they step into the relationships and they of course whether it is uh, you know um, gay leader or these uh, straight relationships they want to please their partner they want to make sure their partner is happy and what happens very often they are doing anything whatever it takes to make them happy which means their partners are changing them they're not mm -hmm. accepting men for the way they are they take them as marriage material and they change them mm -hmm. And they, they either bitch test them or they either push them or they moan or do whatever, whatever it takes for another partner. Very often to amend and reshape original man who they were in the beginning, who, you know, with whom they fall in love with and with whom they chosen to have the life together. They are reshaping them into whatever figure they want to see. And man is going through so much pressure to suit that person to please their partner so what's your opinion on that i think the thing is about acceptability and accepting of ex there's two levels of acceptance that have to take place to give us healthy relationships whoever those relationships are with whether it's with our partners or whether even within our families there's the internal acceptance that has to take place about your self and who you are and then there's the external acceptance of the acceptance of the other person and how that person sees you and there is a balance to be to be had here and I think often um, one of the things about the way in which our we 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 grow emotionally and we evolve and we develop as emotional human beings is our ability is that balance the balance between the acceptance internally and what's expected externally and i think that is where sometimes you know the, the kind of way in which masculinity if you like or being male is thought about in society sometimes doesn't help that kind of um ease with yourself and um, it's interesting that um if you go back and look at the, the the words that we use when we talk about illness or you know not being healthy we often talk about being about disease and you know i'm sure everybody here will know but remember that comes from two separate words coming together dis ease and that means not being at ease and it's usually a, a, an imbalance between something in the physical, it might be in a physical sense in terms of health, it might be an imbalance between your body function and what your body's required to do, a balance between not being able to perform in the same way. The same thing happens emotionally, a dis-ease between the internal sense of self and the external sense, so who you know yourself to be and how free and able you are to express that, whether it's in a relationship or whether it's in society. You know, for, so, for example, the if you think about um, gay relationships and, and, and um, gay individuals, gay people, there is a there's a hurdle around the coming out because it's the it, it's about letting out into how easy is it for you to be yourself within a society that may or may not accept you. And similarly, if you think about that within within um, a straight relationship situation and look thinking about masculinity, how easy is it for you as a male to to share the fact that you are not well, that you're not coping, that actually you don't actually feel you don't feel strong and maybe you just want to cry. How easy is it? How, how much dis-ease is there between your ability to do that? So the whole sense of health, um, you know, is, is much more more than the physical but often it's played out in the physical or played out in the emotional or played out in the mental health so all these things come together so it's you know somebody may come for example um, and complain of constant headaches and that could be a physical cause but it could be a, a way in which their dis-ease is manifesting itself Yes, exactly. You know what's fascinating? I I, I will share it in a minute. We have a couple of uh, uh, people who are viewing us at the minute, and I would love to hear from them actually what they think about this um, as they are watching us. I think it will be quite fascinating to hear their opinion. <laughs> yes. okay. so feel free to comment your opinion about 
what do you think how easy it is for men and if you're a man how easy it is for you to share your feelings your emotions your problems your issues and everything else yeah so we'll be looking forward to comments will be really fascinated to hear but what i wanted to share from my side laura i cannot i cannot tell you how many cases i have with my clients when they would come to my office and there would be different reasons why they would come. There could be anger management. There could be they are depressed. There could be uh, they are suicidal. So the reasons why they would come to see me would be various, right? But there was really interesting phrase, which I heard again, again, and again from all of them, right? From big blokes, you know, like rugby, <laughs> players, big head, big neck, big body, right? Super tall. And I'm, tall and I'm like, hello, <laughs> right? To some <laughs> guys, like, it doesn't matter, right? The, what the color, what the height, what profession they were doing. I must say that doesn't matter what issue they were coming with to see me. What was fascinating, again, again, they were saying the same phrase. Olga, within... Time could be different, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, depends, you know, what point they share during the session. But that would say, Olga, I never spoke that much about me in my life. And that mm. is eye-opening. That is really eye-opening. How often men yeah. have space to share how they feel emotionally, how they feel physically, how they feel mm. spiritually, how they feel at many other aspects in their lives. And it is shocking how many men, they still hold back. But, you know, my question is, because yes, of course they can come here and they can seek help and they can get that help. But how can we help masses, right? If we could give, let's say, because you mentioned four areas, right? And in your opinion, if you could give, let's say three tips in each area, what man could, you in order for them to feel better to maybe express themselves to to maybe improve their well-being in each area what they could do you know what would be your wisdom like takeaways within each area let's say two or three whichever you can come up with okay well i think the i think the um the first one i probably will start with the emotional because that's the one that maybe is the one that people think about most in relation to men's health i.e you know the ability to as i say have be at ease with and be able to express yourself emotionally the first thing i would say is that it, it's important to create a situation which enables you to speak OK, I mean, one of the good things about doing this, for example, is this is a space that we've created to give permission to speak. And that's something that men often need. They need permission to speak. So, I mean, we see often again, you might you might if you think about your own relationships that you have with males in your life, whether they are, whether it's your boyfriend, whether it's your husband, whether it's a father, whether it's a son, whether it's an uncle, a brother, it doesn't matter the male relationship. And, and I think that is key here that we all, whether we're in a relationship with a man or not, we have men within our lives where this is important. You know, that's if we're not a man ourselves as well on top of that. So create those spaces. So, for example, one way would be to, um, so in creating a space, that means something that makes you feel comfortable. Mm. So there may be a particular person that you feel better, easier to talk to. It might be some somebody in your family it might be someone it doesn't really matter who that happens to be and it doesn't even have to be another man it may be another man it may not be so create a space first thing is find somebody that you can speak to and practice speaking don't wait until that you're actually got a problem to do that so there is something about for yourself learning to speak learning to use your voice and learning to talk about not just what you did because men have many conversations which start with you know oh today I did this so they're, they're about facts they're focused on action and not focused on emotion so find someone you feel comfortable with and then practice speaking about emotion and one of the easiest ways to do that is actually not necessarily to speak about how you're feeling now but do you remember a time when mm. 
Mm. So, you know, I remember a time when I felt like this and talk about something in the past, because that's something that you, I don't mean something deep and meaningful. You don't need to do that. But it's actually things about think about the emotions, happiness, sadness, grief, joy. And think about, can you give an example? Can you talk about, do you know what made me feel joyous? What makes me feel so it's almost like you give yourself permission to talk, not quite in the third person, because it's all about you, but you're not having to say, oh, today, this is how I feel. And it's not a problem to be solved, but it's just practice in speaking. So they would be the two things on emotion. Find somebody that you're comfortable to speak with about your emotion and practice speaking about how you feel or how you felt, just using those words. So that, that would be the first thing. Physical, I'm going to come to next because the, because physical health is often one of the things that is either the trigger for men's emotional and mental well-being, or it's the or or physical issues, physical disease, are the reflection or the consequence of emotional mental not not feeling very well. That's how it often is played out. And if you and if you if you wonder, you know, kind of why this is important is if we look at men's health compared to women's health ac across the world. Across the world, in every single country of the world, OK, there is a there is a disparity. There's a difference. Men fare worse than women in relation to health. Women in every country live longer than men. Doesn't matter how poor the country is, doesn't matter how rich the country is. Women live longer than men, or men live lower, low, lower length of lives than women. And in the countries, it can vary between, you can anywhere between six and eight years difference of life. That's quite a lot. That is a lot of life lost. Yeah. That's a lot of time not with families. That's a lot of time not seeing children or grandchildren grow up. That's a lot of time. And it's also a lot of women and a lot of men, depending on the nature of your relationship, who've lost a partner. Exactly. That's true. So the loss, the loss of time and, and remembering that the most precious resource that we all have is time. Yeah. So if we can actually make men physically men's physical health better, we all gain time with our fathers, our brothers, our cousins, our, our, our brothers and sisters, we all gain time. Yeah, sure. So the physical is, one of the things I've noticed around physical health with men, you'll probably know that in, in whichever language we use, we tend to say to, the, 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 what I've noticed in my medical um, experiences, the question that's often asked to men is, are you all right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Whereas the question often asked to women is, how do you feel? And the answer that men give to the, are you all right, tends to be yes. Because what can you ask? What can, what can, you, ask? What can you ask? When they... It's a close question. Yes yeah. or no. Okay. So the physical health, men do have poorer physical health generally across the world. And I think when you know that as a man, you know that what you're by, by talking about, and by raising a question or saying, I'm not actually feeling too well. Think about those six to eight years of life you potentially have to gain with the people that you love. And the reason what we, one of the reasons, there are two things that we find is one is the, the men either report illness later that's one of the things that puts them at higher risk or they have poorer treatment adherence as we call it i.e if, if you go to the doctor when they finally go to the doctor or whatever the doctor gives them a prescription or tells them what to do and they are more likely than women not to cash the prescription the prescription's still in the car or in the glove compartment or in the bag or in the pocket weeks and months later yeah. yeah. So there is something about. So the first tip is about be aware of your body. You know your body the best. Yeah. You know when your body is at ease and things are working well. And you also know when your body is at dis ease. Yeah. Yeah. Trust your instincts around your body. So that's the first thing. Listen to what your body is telling you. And the second thing is. Give your, make sure that you've got the bravery to act on that, whether that is 
you need to tell somebody in your family again just worthy person's emotion it might be someone different but follow up because the biggest killer of men in physical health is late presentation going to seek help too late and not sticking to the treatment yep Agreed. so that's what we we need what we need you need to be able to do because it's not a coincidence if it was just about money or if it was just about access to health then you would find that men who were financially better off or who lived in places like we do in the UK where we get free healthcare, their health should be the same as women. But worldwide, it's worse. Yeah. So therefore, we have to say there is something in a behaviour, the behavioural reason on top of everything else that's actually making the health worse. I agree. So that's the physical. Yeah. The social is really important. I think particularly at the moment while we're in, you know, worldwide, we're facing a pandemic worldwide. We're facing different levels of lockdown and isolation that the, the importance of social well-being to everybody at this time couldn't be more crucial. Mm -hmm. But again, think about the places and the ways in which many men, not all men, but many men, on average, again, when we look across um, what is most usual in, in males, most men socialise in places that are social. I know that sounds like a comp, but they socialise through attending football or attending sports, which are group activities. They may socialise through, you know, going to pubs or going out for drinks or whatever. That's how they socialise. Now, you might say, well, women do that too as well. But women also have other backup ways they socialize. They socialize by getting around together in each other's houses, which is less common for males than it is for women, for many other reasons. Women also socialize verbally quite openly with friends. So they will chat for hours on their phone, they will et cetera, et cetera. That's not the way men socialize. So there's something about the ways in which we socialize. And particularly at the moment with COVID and with the restriction on movement, we are, men are more likely to suffer from isolation, which we know statistically then makes them more likely to unfortunately be uh, the victims of suicide or depression uh, arising out of isolation. So I think, think about the ways that you normally socialize. So social well-being, we're all being forced in a way to do much more of this that we're doing, being online. And I see much more men using it online. But make sure that you check in. Who is the person? That's someone you check in with. Yeah. And that's a two-way street. So people checking in with you, but also you checking in. Even if you're feeling low at a time, if you check in with someone else, that's a positive action which will help them and help you. Mm -hmm. So we need to create the situations in which we have that social connection. Yeah. We have that social connection. The, so the isolation is one thing. The other thing around social collection is often what, and again, we find this, we can, the research shows it. I mean, I've been, as you know, working and researching around mental health for over 25 years. But one of the things I've learned about men is that men socialize much more openly when they're single. Yeah. When men are in a relationship, they socialize less independently. And that's not about whether they're with a woman or a man who's letting them go out. But often what happens is the partner creates the social situation. So they don't have to actively make their own social yeah. social links because they go to work and they have social people there. They might go to football and there's social people there. But most of their socialization when they're in a relationship married or not is actually in a partnership socialization sense so they men are more likely than women are, women are more likely to keep their in the friendships of people they had when they were single wow. men in relationships tend not to do that so again when you're isolated socially who are you going to call who are you going to ring? Who is the person? Who are the people? So it might be a good time I think in this time to reconnect with people they may not have had connections with. I love that. I mean, I know you're talking about my own thing. I mean, I've got friends from when I was, you know, in primary school, you know, but my partner doesn't necessarily, they haven't fallen out. They've just kind of drifted apart. And this is a good opportunity. No one's going anywhere. So it's a good opportunity to reconnect, I think. Because all this helps our mental well-being 
and it and for men it also helps your physical well-being as well mm. and the final thing i wanted to talk about was psychological we talked about emotional we've talked about social we talked about physical we'll talk about psychological which is slightly different from emotional and psychological well-being is about is is about feeling that as human beings we are created to progress to learn to move to develop mm -hmm. so what is it that you're doing to help yourself develop and again is it time to relearn a skill you used to have have you at the back of your cupboard got a guitar that you used to play when you were younger you know and time to restart and this, it's the psychological stimulation of our purpose that helps us to have a sense of ourselves because your psychological well-being is about a sense of self and this is a good time to learn new things to relearn to revisit and it's all about re-enthusing our sense of self and about make and the psychological is the place in which any dis-ease that we have is first noted you know that feeling where you think it just doesn't feel right yes your psychological going something's not going on here and people might dismiss it as well maybe it's just boredom maybe it will pass and those things could be true but i think what in the situation we're in now i think there is a sense in which sometimes this has done us a little bit of a favor. I mean, COVID-19 as a pandemic is absolutely globally devastating. But like all pandemics, I believe that what it actually does is just shine a light for us as a society, as communities, and certainly as individuals to what was there anyway. So the, the bits in our systems, whether they're national systems or personal systems, the bits in our systems, weren't really at ease but actually with all the hullabaloo and the noise of living life we can get lost in that in the quiet that we have now we can listen to that tapping on the chair we can hear whether we are psychologically well whether we are socially connected whether we are emotionally strong and we're with whether we are physically able to work and to do what we have to do and i think so i think on a psychological sense Take a time to listen to yourself and take a time to learn, relearn or revisit something that gives you your own sense of identity and worth and well-being. I love that, really love that. I was just making notes to make sure uh, people can actually read this later on about all these areas. And I'm so grateful you shared so much because you covered literally every area. <laughs> tips within every area honestly i was just making sure you know i can listen and i can type at the same time but this is so so yes. valuable you know and what you mentioned actually about this psychological thing about learning something forgotten and learning something what will make you you who you are as a person and will make you grow will stretch a little bit i think it's so important because just like with friendships mm -hmm going back to the social level as well, just like with friendships, men leave friendships behind and they leave their yes. hobby of interest behind as well. As soon as they go into relationships, woman is taking over the lives and then yeah. come on board and then a household is coming on board and then everything else is coming on board and eventually man is losing his identity. Mm. And I think the thing is, it's important to stress that this doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. This is something that becomes a norm over a long period of time. And it's certainly not that one partner is taken from the other. No. There's something about as you in a relationship, it becomes, it's almost like something so silent as you don't always notice it. So no one can take anything that you don't give up. And no one, and often, even if we talk about the friendship thing, that I think is a really good example is that at no point that if any couple that I've ever known, or certainly in my own relation, do they sit down and go, do you know what, now I'm going to stop seeing my friends and you're just going to see your friends. It's not that, <laughs> it's not that way. It happens over a slow period of time. But I think what this period gives us is an opportunity to reconnect to our whole sense of health and wellness because those four pillars that we've talked about they're not just for now but they are the things that keep us going 
on in decades and in generations as we move through our our lives because you know things happen to you in your life you know you meet people you may not be, your relationship may work it may not work you may age people move away you know you have families different pressures that's normal pattern of life in the world and how well we are in those four spheres physical emotional psychological and social they are the things that kind of keep us balanced and sustain us you know so that you know we because there is something about holding on to all of yourself that gives you strength so if things are in a bit rickety in one in one sense you know then the other three things need to be strong think of a stool a, a table a chair with four legs if one leg is wobbly the table will still stand but if you've only got three legs and one becomes wobbly it's, it just falls over you know so we need to we need to think about that we there are four elements within us that need to be at ease i love that. and if not the dis-ease is what impacts on our health and wellness beautiful you know what this is the most beautiful analogy honestly because it's easy to understand it's easy to envision as well and when we take care of each leg in our life uh, in terms of each area of our life, uh, well-being, health, and everything else, this one actually we feel well balanced. And if men and women, because again, we're not just mm -hmm. talking about men, men and women, when both parties will take care of themselves, of those four legs of the table, this is when they're going to have well-balanced relationships, right? Yes. It is. It is. And I think as a society, we, you know, we, we as adults can do what we want. And but equally, if we are as parents thinking about, you know, raising children and if whether they're our children or their children within our family, and we have more of a, a group communal responsibility for them, then it's important that the male child as well as the female child have that sense of, of you know the need for balance and ease in all aspects of their life yeah and that's what we need to do and i think that was what will future proof us in the future but there are many things we can do now your body your mind your emotions your social thing is already sending you messages and now is the time to listen and to act on those things it is definitely time to listen to act on those and i hope those notes which i was just uh, <clears throat> posting below the video will help those who just will join in later and will watch this video you know the replay mm -hmm. is i'm going to be posting that yeah. and i hope that will really help the listeners and particularly men to actually yeah. understand it is important to speak out about their health to speak out about their emotions to speak out about their interests their hobbies their friendship circles and so fascinating how you know coincidentally today i was making actually a video uh, on relationships because Friday is my relationship on my social media and I spoke about should you keep social circles active like as in friendships and, and you know going out with your friends and traveling with your friends after you stepped into relationships and and my answer on this is absolutely yes mm. whether you're a woman or man you should keep your friendships because this is when you are full of identity because your other health will never be able to replace absolutely everybody in your life. And when as a man, you were having quite active life with your sport activities or, you know, meeting with friends, going out or doing whatever, and you had conversations, whether they were deep or not, that's a different question, all right? But still you <laughs> have social life and now you step yeah. into relationships and you forgot about yourself. Well, it's time to step up. Yes. Step yeah. up time to talk about yourself about your health about your well-being because healthier you healthier family that's yeah. i know we have a saying happy wife happy life but you know what it's not only wife no, you should that's, be happy true. Too. <laughs> that's true i think i mean if i was to give a tip to anyone who's a partner of a man you oh, know male female yes, what please. i would say to them is a good tip just one tip for them is change the question you're asking okay. so instead of asking are you all right ask how do you feel i love that i'm just tapping that here so people can how see how do you feel how do you feel i love that yeah I love that. yeah 
so we can and we can ask that as a general question we can also ask that as a directed question if if you can see say if you know something hasn't gone well you can say how did not how did it go because that's asking about an action you can say how did you feel about that today yeah i love that and Get again it's about giving permission to speak yes yeah i love that i absolutely love that because yes it is something what we women ask each other but at the same time if you give men enough time to gather his thoughts and to gather his emotions and feelings together then they'll be able to answer the question yeah it happens very often and i see it very often when i have couple uh here for coaching i would ask something man and man would go you know into the box <laughs> And he will try to find, you know, which box relates to that question. And it takes some time. Mm. Well, the woman would sit there impatiently and will say, come on, so what do you feel? What do you think? I'm like, yes, time. But, but I think that's a really good example of the difference of how, how used people are, how, me, how men are not necessarily used to talking about that, which is why I think that practicing, having for the men having putting themselves or making situations to enable them to practice is one thing and for their partners to ask them questions that gives them permission to speak so they can practice because not everybody can you know if you've if you've spent 20 30 40 50 60 or more years answering one question in a particular way you know you almost are waiting and, and often when I've spoken to men in, in, a, in, in my health work they'll say well no one's ever asked me what I, about that because they're waiting they, they what they've learned is or what they've been socialized into is to respond appropriately so if they're, if they're not asking how you feel then for some men not all you know that's not what you asked me though they asked me about you know whether I was all right. And that's sometimes where the confusion comes. So I think we can help, we can all help our partners and the men in our lives and wherever they are by asking them the right questions and helping them to create the opportunities to speak. Because the silence around men's health is what's killing males. Oh, this is so powerful. You just said it, honestly, Laura, you just said it, the silence around men's mental health is what's killing them yeah. this is a killer phrase absolutely absolutely well laura you know what i must say that the time flew oh wow <laughs> it did we must, we must have been having fun <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i must say you shared so much value you gave away so many tips I was busy typing, typing them all down. They're all there below the video. But I am so ever grateful for all your wisdom, everything. You're welcome. Talking. Because this is so valuable and this is so, so helpful. And I just wish every man who will watch this video and every partner of men who will be watching this video actually will be able to reflect on it and also help men to be healthier and happier in order to build happier families. Because as I said earlier, happy wife, happy life is not really that true anymore but the silent as you said laura the silence around mental health of man is what is killing them yes. so let's speak about it more let's speak about louder let's actually bring it up on the surface and all thanks to you an amazing woman <laughs> thank you very much thank you very much thank you very much yes but as i say hopefully we will speak again and um you know speak about other things you know so it will be it will be a pleasure do let's so. do that let's do. well i must say that i'm absolutely delighted to have you already booked to speak on yes. your author's uh, live uh, show on facebook on monday 11th of may right yes where you'll yes, just have right. an amazing book i'm really excited to hear about that <laughs> share the main takeaways of your book the main tips of that and you know what we can do actually to give more value to people how about uh if you don't mind of course how about if i'll post the name of this book below this video so maybe people who will watch this video they'll be able to maybe purchase this book and read it and actually have more wisdom of yours on 11th of may would you be okay with that absolutely okay with that the, the, yeah. the our next talk is going to be about the sexual health of men, which is an area that I've researched for well over 20 years and worked in um, as a previous nurse and sexual health worker myself. So um, the book is entitled The Sexual Health of Men. And um, that's what we'll be talking about.
talking about. So we'll be getting more emotional um, possibly a little more intimate, but um, it will all be for the good of men and women. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, absolutely. This is for benefit of both genders because obviously yes. it's about relationship between the two. And if men are healthier, then the healthiest relationship and the healthy woman is the healthier relationship is. Yes. About As we said, you know, just, the, you know, to remember that, you know, what we are, what we are invested in is at least another six to eight years more time together. Yes, exactly. And that is good, good goal to work for. <laughs> that is definitely a good, good goal. Well, Laura, thank you so much. I'm so ever grateful. I'm sending you my virtual kisses. I'm sending you my virtual hugs. Next time I see you in person. Virtual I'm kisses, that. virtual waves. <laughs> thank you yes. so much everybody who joined us watching it was good to see numbers raising whilst we were here and it was good to share with you this value if anybody has any questions how laura they can be in touch with you could you please share details of where they can find you and i will definitely tag them below the yes video. i'm definitely i'm on linkedin and under my name laura serrett where you can find me and i we're linked together so they can find me your your many many followers can find me through linkedin um i'm also on twitter and uh, and we can put my contact details as get at the bottom. So again, I'm on Twitter as my name at Laura Session. My new website will be launched, so you'll be able to find me there as well. And I'm also on Instagram. I go by my name, so I'm easy to find. Wonderful. That's wonderful. So dear listener, if you have any questions, please do contact Laura. Please do contact me if you have any questions personal to me. And we will be definitely thinking about making them maybe more regular and to bring more value to you. But we'll see you again on 11th of May at 1 p.m. UK time on Facebook Live, where Laura will be sharing all the wisdom about men's sexuality. I'm so excited to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Laura. everybody be safe thank yeah yes. everybody you. stay safe right. thank you Laura, so much i'll be just about to finish this video bye, -bye. see you all soon